Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. As our case opens tonight, your district attorney and Harrington are seated at a council table in a hot, stuffy courtroom. They've been impatiently awaiting the return of a jury who have spent many hours deliberating a verdict. Word has come that this verdict has been reached. Spectators have filed into the room. The judge has returned to the bench. Finally, a side door is opened and the jury returns. Silently, they enter the jury box. An air of tense excitement grips the court as the clerk calls upon the foreman of the jury to rise. In droning tones, he asks, How say you? Do you find this defendant guilty or not guilty? We, the jury, find him not guilty. Huh? Oh, Chief, did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. Oh, what a swindle. I don't understand it. Why, a bunch of ten-year-old kids that know Stanley committed that murder. I thought we had everything we needed on this one. Not evidently there was a reasonable doubt in the minds of the jury. A reasonable doubt? <laughs> oh, look at Stanley grinning all over the place. He should be. He'll never be as lucky again. Oh, look at... Hey. Hmm? Hey, he's coming over here. Oh, yes. Hiya, Mr. D.A. Hello, Stanley. Ain't you gonna congratulate me? For what? For winning the Duke. You still done that killing, Stanley? Ain't how to jury call it. That's what they pay off on. See you later, boys. Oh, brother. How could they let that punk off? I don't know. One thing is certain, though. What's that, Jim? This merely postpones Mr. Stanley's engagement with the chair. How come? He's a professional killer and will continue to be one. And the next time we pick him up, we'll make it stick. Oh, oh, Chief. Yes, Harrington. Did you see the morning papers? You mean the account of the trial? Yeah, they mm. certainly blasted that verdict yesterday. Yes, I know. Uh, they took particular pains, though, to point out that it wasn't your fault. Well, unfortunately, that isn't much consolation. No. Excuse me, Chief. Yes, Miss Miller. Uh, there's a Mrs. Clark in the outer office. Yes. Uh, she was one of the jurors on the Stanley case. Oh, does she want to see me? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know what about? Well, I don't know. She said it's important. Well, all right, have her come here. Yes, sir. Huh. Wonder what this is, no, Chief. No, no. Oh, thank you. Uh, you remember Mrs. Clark? Oh, yes, of course. How do you do, Mrs. Clark? And this is Mr. Harrington. How, How do you do, do, Mrs. Clark? Sit down, won't you? Here. Very well. Sit here. Now, what can I do for you? Well, uh, I have something to tell you. It uh, has to do with the trial. Yes? I, uh, well, I feel that there's something very suspicious about the verdict. Mm -hmm. That's why I came here. Yeah, you better get your pad and pencil, Miss Miller. I have it right here. I'll take this down, Chief. Thank you. And just what are your suspicions, Mrs. Clark? Well, in the beginning, most of us believed that Stanley was guilty of the murder. Mm -hmm. But there was one man especially who insisted he wasn't. And, well, he had a lot to say about it. Yeah, who was that? Uh, Mr. Taylor, he was the foreman. Yes, I remember him. He insisted that Stanley was innocent. And what did he base this on? Mm, well, he never would give a reason. Mm -hmm. Just kept saying he knew he wasn't guilty. Well, how did he get everyone else to come around to his way, you think? Well, the first change came when we were taken out to lunch the second day. Mm -hmm. uh, this Mr. Taylor sat with two other men on the jury. And when we returned... Well, they had changed their vote to not guilty. Did they give any reason for this change? No. Uh, these two men were more or less leaders. Their changeover gradually influenced most of the others. And finally, by the third day, another juror and myself were the only two who were for conviction. Mm -hmm. Well, what made uh, you both switch? Well, at dinner time, this Mr. Taylor sat with the man who was siding with me. Mm -hmm. 
Mardero went on there, made him change his mind. So after dinner, you were the lone holder? Yes. And then you finally just uh, gave up? Oh, no. No? Well, I, I mean, I was prepared to stand my ground to the finish when I received a message from an attendant. It was about my son. Yes. It said he was coming home on a final furlough before going overseas, and... He'd only be in town overnight. And, of course, you wanted to see him. Yes. And besides, by this time, all the others agreed he wasn't guilty, so I I voted with them. Well, I can understand that. But the message wasn't true, sir. What do you mean? My son called me this morning from camp. He, he knew nothing about it. Hey. That's really what convinced me I should come here. Well, I'm certainly glad you did, Mrs. Clark. Do you think that Taylor guy had anything to do with the phony message? I don't know. Well, I think we should try to find out. I'd like to have a talk with this man, Taylor. Find out where he can be located, Harrington, and bring him in for questioning. <laughs> Hiya, Mr. Butler. Well, how old, Stanley? Wonder what happened to you. Well, I kind of did a little celebrating last night. Yeah, I sort of figured you would. I'll make the office. Okay. You hung over? Yeah, a little bit. I have to fix that. So well. Go ahead. Thanks. Sit down again. Okay. What a beast. Got your right. Oh, shot a ride, too good. Right. I want to thank you, Mr. Butler. For what? For the fix. You mean the verdict? Yeah. Well, you killed a guy for me. The least I could do was rig a jury for you. Yeah. Drink up. Thanks. That should ease the pain. How did you ever do it? What? Swing them jury guys. The way that D.A. piled the points on me, I figured I was cold. I told you I'd take care of things, didn't I? Sure, but even him up, he said I didn't have a chance. He just didn't know the score, that's all. What was it, Kim? I owned the foreman. A little fat guy? Yeah. How come? Well, he was in a pocket and needed dough. I just took care of him. What about the others? Well, I used a kind of a smart maneuver then. How do you mean? Most people, somewhere in the past, have got something they'd rather not have brought up again. Yeah. So I had a checkmate in a jury, dug up enough on three of them to turn a little heat on her. Well, how did you get to them? Well, it seems that there's a waiter in the joint that jury ate in who happened to be a friend of mine. A guy I'd kind of done favors for. Oh. I sent a note through him to the foreman, giving him a rundown on these three guys in the jury. So we went to work on them. You really operate, Mr. Butler. That's my business. Anything can be fixed, kid. You just got to know how, that's all. Well, you've done a swell job. And just to show you I mean that, the next killing you want done is on me. Right in here, Mr. Taylor. All right, all right. Chief, you remember this fellow? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Hello, Mr. Taylor. How do you do? He wasn't too happy about coming over here, Chief. Naturally. I have neglected my business enough serving on that jury. Well, I'm sorry, but this is quite important. Now, sit down, please. Very well. Uh, Harrington, did you explain to Mr. Taylor why I wanted to see him? Uh, no, Chief. I thought you could do that better than me. All right. Uh, just what is this all about? Well, it has to do with the verdict reached by you and your fellow jurors yesterday. Yes? We have a report from a woman named Clark. She served with you. What about? She seemed convinced that several of the jurors were pressured into changing their views on the case. Well, that's ridiculous. Why, that woman... Well, Mr. Taylor, uh, why don't you wait till you hear the whole thing? Very well. Go ahead. She also believed that you were the one who exerted this pressure. Why, this is fantastic. She named three specific jurors who were influenced. We're trying to contact these men now to substantiate her story. Well, I must tell you right now, sir, this is the most libelous thing I have ever encountered. You deny the charge? Completely. Look, Mr. Taylor... Just a minute. Yeah. I think I see behind this whole thing now. What do you mean? 
Wouldn't it be possible that having lost the case, you are now looking for some excuse to justify it? Oh, hardly. Well, it certainly appears that way. Now, just a minute. Now, wait, Harrington. Yeah. I called you in here, Mr. Taylor, to acquaint you with the charge that's been made. Frankly, I intend to investigate it thoroughly. So I advise you to remain available for further questioning. See you for a minute, Mr. Butler. Oh, come in, sir. What are you doing here? Something has come up. I had to talk to you. It wasn't very smart of you to come here. I had to. Well, what is it? I've just come from the district attorney's office. What are you doing there? He sent for me. What for? A woman on the jury has charged that I was responsible for the acquittal. So what? She implied that I exerted pressure. How would you know? Well, that isn't the point, Mr. Butler. The fact remains the charge has been made. The DA said he's going to make a thorough investigation. Okay. Let him investigate. But if those men I influence should talk... Well? Well, I, I have a reputation to think of, Mr. Butler. I'm a respected man. Sure, sure. You've got to do something. You have to help me. Look, Taylor, nothing's going to happen. How do you know? Just take my word for it. I'm sorry. That isn't enough. No? No. I demand a guarantee of protection. The same protection you gave to Stanley. You demand it, huh? I most certainly do. Don't forget, you have as much to lose as I have. How do you figure that? Well, you were responsible for my swaying that jury. So? If the district attorney were to find that out, you'd be in this thing, too. How do you figure the DA would find out about me? Well, um, I... Um, uh, you, too? Possibly. Yes. That's very interesting. Who's that? Hey, Stanley. Come in. I get company. Ah, remember? Yeah, the jury guy. That's right. He's got trouble. What's the matter? The DA smells of fix. I have just come from his office. He's worried. I'm afraid I won't take care of him. Why? I don't know. He says if he falls, I fall, too. Oh, I didn't exactly say that. That could mean a new trial, kid. Hey, now, wait a minute. We can uh, fix that, though. How? Remember that favor you owed me? Huh? You promised me one on the house. Oh. Well, what are you going to do about this, Mr. Butler? I'm taking care of it. How? Show him, Stanley. Right. Oh! oh. It's good to be working again. Excuse me, Chief. Yes, Mr. Uh, here are typewritten copies of all the testimony we took. Oh, fine. Put them right on the desk. Yes, sir. Well, that should be just about all the evidence we need against Mr. Taylor. Yes. And all three of the jurors said they were willing to repeat this testimony in court. I know. Uh, one thing puzzles me, though, Chief. Yes, what's that? How did Taylor find out these things about the other three jurors? Well, I'm certain he didn't. What do you mean? I think it was passed on to him by someone else. You think he was just acting as a stooge for Stanley? No, no, no. Stanley wouldn't have been smart enough to fix a jury either. Then who was it? I'm afraid I can't answer that. But I felt right along that Stanley had someone higher up behind him who was trying to save his neck. How do you know? Well, he's a professional killer. He commits murder for profit. Whoever his client was on this killing we tried him for could very easily be the one who helped him. And also the one who dug up the paths of the men you just talked to and bought them with it. Yes. Well, I should think he'd be as important as in this thing as Stanley well, is. He definitely is. However, we still have to learn his identity. All right, Chief. Oh, come in, Harrington. Right, Mr. I'm trying to locate you. I was down at headquarters. We talked to those three jurors. All of them admitted finally that Taylor had influenced them to vote for acquittal after he had threatened to reveal some damaging fact in their past. How do you like that? It's okay. I want you to get Taylor over here at once. Well, there ain't much chance of that, Chief. Mm -hmm. Why not? His body was found about half an hour ago out in Fairview Park. Oh. And laying next to him was a cop with two bullets in his chest. Three, 
Oh, Mr. Butler. Hi, Sam. Up, up. I've been waiting here most of the morning for you. Why? I run into a little screw up. What do you mean? Can I talk to you? Sure, sure. I took Taylor's body out to dump it last night, just like we planned. Yeah? I bring him to Fairview Park. Uh -huh. I park the car and come out. Just as I planned them, there turns up a cop. Oh, fine. He throws one of them what's going on here routines at me. Yeah? While he's in the middle of it, I put two slugs in him. That wasn't very smart. What else could I do? Got a stiff with me, remember? Shooting cops is bad business, Stanley. What'd you do with Taylor's body? I dumped it beside the car. Are you kidding? Huh? Oh, that's great. Well, what do you mean? Why don't you put a label on it? I don't get it. The DA is going to mildly suspect that you killed Taylor anyway. Just figured he'd never get any proof, that's all. Well, finding that cop beside him is something different. They'll turn the whole force loose on you, kid. Yeah, that's okay. It ain't man. with me, Stanley. I got a piece of this thing, too. Well, what do you want I should do? Well, you better go under. Go on, now, look. It's the only thing that totally heats off anyway. Uh, I was just starting to operate. You do like I say. You go under and fast. <laughs> Where's the chief, Miss Miller? Oh, he's been over at Taylor's office doing some sort of an investigation on him. Well, what good does that do now? Well, he believes that Taylor was acting for someone else when he fixed that jury. Sure he was, for Stanley. No, Harrington. The chief believes there's someone above Stanley. Above? Who? Well, that's what he's trying to find out. Yeah, well, I hope he gets something. Yeah. Any word on Stanley? Not yet, but there's a pretty healthy search on for him. Mm -hmm. How's the policeman? The one who was shot? Yeah. I just checked City Hospital. The condition's about the same. I see. Has he uh, regained consciousness yet? No. Well, if he should die, then there's no way of proving that Stanley did the shooting. That's right, unless we come up with some new evidence. Oh, hi, Chief. Hello. Oh, how'd you make out, Chief? I think I found something. Oh, good. Was this in Taylor's office? Yes. Well, what is it, Chief? Well, I did a pretty thorough check on his business affairs. Yeah? A representative of his bank worked with me. Uh-huh. I learned that he'd had a good deal of financial trouble lately. He owned several small enterprises, and they were all heavily mortgaged. Yeah? These mortgages were held by a man we're all familiar with. Who's that? Mr. Joe Butler. What? The fixed guy, huh? That's right. How did Taylor get mixed up with him? Oh, Butler has many legitimate investments, and these were some of them. Oh. Just before the trial, these mortgages were canceled. What, you mean called off? Yes. And there's no record of Taylor having paid. Well, that sounds like Butler made a deal with him, Chief. Yes, Miss Miller, it certainly seems that way. Well, that sure looks like the tie-in, all right. Yes. Oh, um, any word on Stanley? No, not yet. And how is that cop? He's still unconscious, Chief. Are there any clues at all on the thing? Just two, the bullets and some tire tracks that were found. Police lab is working on both of them. I see. What are you going to do on this Butler angle, Chief? I intend to pay a call on him. When? Right now. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, this is a real surprise. Really? Yeah. What's in your mind? Murder. Well, it's okay for openers. Got anybody in mind? Now, this murder has already been committed. Oh. The body of a man named Taylor was found this morning on Fairview Park. How was he? I believe he was a business acquaintance of yours. Taylor? Yes. You held several mortgages on some of his enterprise. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, I remember the guy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear about that. How did it happen? Well, we believe a man named Stanley was responsible. I is one I don't know. Well, I think you do. Another business acquaintance? It could be. Stanley is a professional killer. Taylor served on a jury that just acquitted him of murder. Why should he want to kill somebody who acquitted him? Well, Taylor was bribed to swing that acquittal. Oh. It's my belief that the bribing was done by you. <laughs> Very funny. I didn't intend it to be. You know, you legal guys kill me. How's that? Everything with you is uh, deduction, ain't it? Well, this is more than straight deduction. You mean you have proof? I will have. How? Whoever got rid of Taylor's body ran into a policeman in the park. Yeah? He shot the policeman. No kidding. But fortunately for us, he didn't die. The cop? That's right. 
Well, that is a break. He's in City Hospital right now. Still unconscious. Mm -hmm. When he comes around, he should have an interesting story to tell. Yeah. I'd like to hear it. You will. Army. Oh? Yeah. <laughs> For you. Thank you. Hello? Oh, yes, Harrington. What's that? I see. Yes. Yes, fine. But I'm glad you called. Right. Goodbye. And that was another report on the officer who was shot. The doctors believe he'll be well enough to talk tomorrow. Good. I'll get in touch with you again after I've heard his report. I'll be waiting to hear from you. This is Ford. Thanks. Calling Dr. Cantamino. Calling Dr. Cantamino. Dr. Cantamino. Report to emergency. Right, right. Let me drop that. Let go of me. Let drop it. Yeah. 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 Good work, Harrington. Put the cuffs on him. Now, here is your district attorney. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think the first thing I should tell you is that Stanley was tried again on the charge of first-degree murder... And with the evidence we gathered, we made it stick this time, and he paid for his crimes in the electric chair. Yeah, and that little visit was long overdue, Chief. Yes, Harrington, it was. Uh, Chief, I think you should tell the device you used to trap him. Well, it was really a desperation measure. You see, the call I received from Harrington when I was in Butler's office was a report that the police officer had died. I knew that his death just not eliminated any real chance we might have to pin the murder on Stanley. The feeling that Butler was working with the killer and also knew his whereabouts, I trumped up the story that the policeman was recovering. I hoped this would go to him in getting rid of him before he could talk. Which it did. <laughs> we spent most of the day in that hospital room waiting for Stanley to show. He didn't know that the body in the bed was a dummy. Oh, with the lights out, he couldn't tell. Mm. You forgot about Butler, Chief. Oh, yes. Well, Mr. Butler has been sent to prison for a long term for his part in the affair. You see, Stanley thought Butler had double-crossed him with a hospital story. So he implicated him in the killing. Well, that's what usually happens, isn't it, Chief, when thieves fall out? Yes, it is. Thank you, and good night. The names of all characters in the ninth dramatization are fictitious, and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Bola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden, and the author was Jerry Devine.